So if you're an avid follower of this channel, you might recall me mentioning a brand known as Certina in previous videos. That said, for some of you watching, you might be saying, I'm not really familiar with this brand at all, as they are pretty relatively unknown across different parts of the globe. However, if that is your level of awareness of this brand, I would say you're probably in for a treat, as this is a brand that is backed by intriguing dive watch heritage, cool technology, and offering a modern collection with some of the best value in its price range. And today we'll be taking a look at their DS Action Diver 38 millimeter, a watch that has become one of my go-to picks for a modern diver under $1,000, especially if you're looking for something in the mid-size format. Let's jump in. So before we jump into this video, if you want more things dive watches, we have a comprehensive guide to some of the best dive watches in the industry, looking at 57 of the leading dive watches in 2023, variety of price ranges, great jumping off point for your research if you want to learn a little bit more about dive watches and what is available to you in the wider watch market. Also, if you're interested in what you're seeing here today from Certina, we are an authorized dealer of Certina. There's only a few places where you can buy Certina in the United States, especially. So if you're trying to get into the brand, uh, we have a wide array of different products available and definitely recommend checking them out. You're Think you're gonna really like but is on display here with this brand it's totally overlooked and a lot to just get lost in in terms of their history as well as the real diving pedigree that they've uh, developed here now as i mentioned in the intro many of you watching this video might not be familiar with certina however the brand has deep roots dating back to 1888 with its first watches being produced in 1906 under the grana moniker before introducing certina as a brand in 1939. in 1959 certina unveiled one of their greatest developments though with their ds collection this ingenious concept surrounded the movement with an encapsulating shock absorbing ring that would prevent impacts and other taxing conditions from interrupting optimal timekeeping, essentially offering a free floating like effect for the movement. In addition, the crown system had its own proprietary approach for offering a watertight seal, enabling 200 meters of water resistance in a decade where dive watches were just getting off the ground. While Certina's DS watches were utilized in a successful 1960 Himalayan climbing adventure, the DS family is most closely associated with the underwater world, with the DS2 Super PH500M having been utilized for US government's tech-tight underwater habitat trials in 1969 and 1970. Shortly thereafter, Certina DS3 Super PH1000M was chosen as the issue watch of the Royal Australian Navy clearance divers for the better part of the 1970s. Now with all these associated types of diving expeditions, it really elevates the legitimacy for Certina's modern DS diving collection. Now the DS action diver we're going to be looking at here today represents Certina's entry level professional diving oriented watch, offering a lot to like in terms of finishing, specification and legitimate ISO 6425 certification for its $800 price point. But beyond that, the watch comes in with a 38 millimeter case diameter, which really carves out a rather distinct market position when you look at the broader watch market for dive watches. Beyond its 38 millimeter diameter, the DS Action Diver has a 12.1 millimeter thickness and a lug to lug of 44.9 millimeters. The end link of the bracelet does extend out, adding to the theoretical lug to lug, but given its smaller size, it probably broadens its appeal, wearing closer to a 39 millimeter when on wrist. To compare this to a more popular watch that maybe some of you have had the opportunity to wear, I would say it's pretty close and relatively similar to that of the Tudor Black Bay 58 in its sizing and wear on the wrist. And if you do require a larger watch, it is important to note that Certina offers plenty of larger dive watches in the range of 42 to 43 millimeters. So safe to say the majority watching are going to be covered when it comes to a watch that's gonna be better for the wrist. Set between unfortunate odd number lugs at 19 millimeters, the Action Diver, 38 leans into a three link style bracelet that offers a simple pin adjustment tapering to the uncommon 17 millimeters in width where it meets the 18 millimeter class blending milled and stamped components and serving up an old school folding divers extension. For further flexibility, the bracelet also includes two points of micro adjustment. And as much as I'd love to see an additional hole here for a third point of micro adjustment, this should offer up enough flexibility to get a perfect fit. Given its more utilitarian presentation, the Action Diver case is all business. Combining simple 90 degree angles at the lugs with an all over brush finish, 
that should handle the underwater world well for the few out there that are actually planning to test out this watch's capabilities. Set between sculpted crown guards at three, a polished 6.5 millimeter crown is DS signed and works in tandem with the screw down case back and enabling this model's solid 300 meters of water resistance. Just as a note, water resistance for Sortina is a characteristic and attribute that they strongly pride themselves in as every single one of the watches that they make is going to be at least 100 meters of water resistance. Turning our attention to the front of the watch, a 120 click unidirectional elapsed time bezel manages dive time or other daily timing needs, complete with an anodized aluminum insert color match to the dial variant on display. The bezel action is solid with almost a complete absence of play while also being just a bit harder to grasp with its polished coin edge format. Set just within a perfectly flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on the underside keeps watch over the dial underneath. The black dial variant of the DS Action Diver has a glossy black primary surface, while the green and blue serve up eye-catching effects with each dial from this trio featuring applied indices in a straightforward geometric format. The hour markers are complete with a sizable helping of Superluminova. At center, a stylized baton minute hand is accompanied by a prominent arrow hour hand and simple stick seconds, all featuring a polished finish and even more luminescent material. The loom here is solid, glowing to a degree that easily rivals its Swiss contemporaries, yet not quite being on the level of that of say some Japanese powerhouses like Seiko or Citizen. At three, a date aperture presents a view of a black on white date disc, while the brand wordmark and logo reside at noon with DS Action, Powermatic 80, and Divers 300 resting at six, speaking to this model's strict adherence to the ISO 6425 standard. Now, if you're unfamiliar with ISO 6425, it supplies the industry with a detailed set of standards to be considered a professional dive watch, including various testing and water resistance, shock resistance, legibility, and a variety of different circumstances, the strength of the bracelet, and magnetic field resistance, just to name a few. Now, I tend to think there's a little bit too much weight placed on this ISO 6425 standard, with many of history's most iconic dive watches ignoring the standard altogether, but it does add further legitimacy while indicating that this watch can take a beating. Further adding to the value proposition here is a Powermatic 80 caliber coming from ETA, oscillating beneath the safety of a polished screw down case back emblazoned with Certina's turtle logo. Positioned as a part of the swatch group, Certina enjoys exclusive access to the Powermatic calibers along with sibling brands like Tissot, Hamilton, and Mito. This movement features an impressive 80 hour power reserve achieved by slowing down the beat rate from four hertz, 28,800 vibrations per hour to three hertz, 21,600 vibrations per hour, while also lightly re working some of the gear train. This movement family is partially responsible, I would say, for leading the way to the now industry-wide trend towards longer power reserves. In addition, the entire balance assembly has been modified from a more traditional regulator pin setup to one of more of a free-sprung variety, with the movements being regulated at the factory for fine-tuning. As another value add here, this version of the Powermatic 80 is the Caesar 7.611. That comes with a Nivicron hairspring, and that's gonna help alleviate the negative effects of magnetism on the movement. Finally, these calibers also have a habit of being well-regulated with all three of these examples that we have here for testing showing solid results. We tested them across five different positions. For the black dial, it was running from zero to plus five seconds a day. The blue dial, plus two to plus six seconds a day. And then the green dial at minus two to plus three seconds a day. As always, don't take this to the bank to have that set your expectations for where this thing should run. But generally speaking, Certina and just generally with these Powermatic 80 movements, they do run pretty great out of the box. So now to unpack looking at these DS Action Divers. And this is my first full in-depth review of a Certina on this channel. I've talked about this brand for a while. It's been hard to get hands on these watches because in the United States until recently, they weren't doing anything. If you are familiar with this brand, you're in Europe or say Nordic countries where I learned is that's actually the leading market for these. These are like some of the number one watches in the Nordic countries. Uh, you're familiar with Certina and I'm really excited to actually talk about this brand because I think they bring a lot to the table when it comes to value. But just to speak to these watches, kind of where they stack up, some of the things that call attention to both in the negative positive end. Uh, to begin, I think the designs for this uh, family of watches in comparison to some of their other watches are much safer. I would say they're almost a little bit generic compared to some other offerings that they have, but that comes also with these trying to be the most versatile contemporary watches that they make. So I think all in all, I don't think that that's a huge trade-off, but yes, definitely not the most daring of designs. It is a lesser known brand, but as I mentioned in certain parts of the world, especially in Europe, much more known. The clasp, although is 
probably fine in comparison to some of the other brands out there in this price range. This is the only area of the watch that I would say is maybe a little bit behind the solid standard that it does set up for itself. And then also with that lug width, that is kind of a bummer on a dive watch just because I think many people have a wide selection of NATO straps. I mean, I bet you could probably fit an even number in there. It might look a little bit weird, but chances are you might have to invest in some new straps. So that is a bit of a bummer. But now to shift over to why these are watches that I wanted to cover first when looking at Certina. For one, on the same element and the same side that we were talking about with these being safe designs, that does come with the added benefit of these being very versatile. They're safe and that leads to you being able to grab these and pull these off in a lot of different scenarios. Also ISO 6425 compliant, again, probably a little bit overrated, but in terms of just knowing that these are built to last, that's great to see. 300 meters of water resistance, bezel action is solid. And then also I think the big thing here is just the sizing. Now not to say that 38 millimeters is the best size for a dive watch, I would say far from that, but that size really allows these to separate from pretty much the rest of the offerings within this price range, unless you're starting to look at micro brands, but they don't have the added benefit to the movement tech and some of the history that Certina has. So the really well positioned. You look at Citizen, you look at Seiko and Tissot, Mito, one of the themes across a lot of those brands is that they don't really do much in this case size. 38 millimeters is a pretty small dive watch. Sure, Seiko has a lot of different offerings, uh, but if you look at like Tissot with the Sea Star, of course they unveiled the 40 millimeter quartz version, but that's not you know, automatic, and I don't think many people would look in that direction that are gonna be maybe looking at something like this. Mito generally has more larger case sizes. The smallest thing they really do in this range for a dive watch is their Tribute Series, which wears like a 40 millimeter. This wears more like the trend of 39 millimeter dive watches that have just blown up in the past, say, few years. And these are, when looking under $1,000, perhaps some of the best that you're going to find. And I've been saying for a while, if you've been looking at a dive watch for around 1,000 bucks, there's a short list of brands that are around that tier. You could look at things like Doxa, Mito, and then below that, of course, you have Seiko Tiso that are doing some great things, Citizen as well. Uh, but these fall in a very interesting range. I also think for those that are looking for more of a midsize type of format, these should be absolutely on your list. And simply put, I'm glad Certina is expanding their reach. And I think many consumers that are going to get their hands on these products are going to be impressed. But all right guys, that's my take looking at the Certina dive watches. Have you handled these watches before? And I'm really speaking to some more European view uh, viewers because I don't think many people from the States have really delved into Certina. And honestly, I don't blame them just because they're pretty hard to get your hands on in the United States. It was pretty much non-existent until recently. So I'd love to see some ownership stories because this is a brand that's only known in certain parts of the world. I'd love to see some comments down below so other people can see uh, what other owners are thinking about these watches. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, really do appreciate that. Also definitely check out teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. How we're able to produce all this content is through the store, the brands don't pay has to make content on this channel. So if you want to support the content, you're in the market for a watch, we'd love to have your business. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.